Hi guys, I have come on live a little early. It's Friday night. You're most probably all busy and not watching us. We didn't really know what was a good time to come live. Um, but we've been doing a series of these chats this week with different people all around sustainability. And it seems quite appropriate, bearing in mind it's Black Friday. Um, here's Emma. So I'll invite her. How do I... Th oh, maybe I've missed. Emma, you might need to uh, ask to join again. I might have missed the opportunity. I can't see. Because we've got lovely Emma. Here we go. I, I, I slid up. Let's see if... There we go. Go live with Emma. I have to keep putting my glasses on and off, so I do apologise, everybody. Um, <laughs> there she is. That's so exciting. We've managed to get it to work. Hi there. Hi, Lucy. Brilliant. <laughs> Look, so we're, wearing, <laughs> we're wearing the same jerseys. Yes, I'm wearing the pink one with the hood, and you're wearing... Are you wearing a Cardi? Oh, you're wearing a turmeric, <laughs> is it? The orangey one. Orangey one. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. So just to introduce everyone, maybe Emma would be better introducing herself, but I'll introduce you quickly and you can add anything. Um, Emma, we came across because she, uh, we found her this year because she's a lovely customer of ours, we're buying the jumpers. But obviously we knew about her fantastic business before. She is one of um, the top interior, leading interior designers in the top 100 of I think it's good housekeeping and country living, isn't it? And top 30 of house the time. House and garden. <laughs> yeah, house and garden, that's it. And top 30 <laughs> of the um, Sunday time. So really, really um, uh, right up there. And um, I think also fairly passionate about this subject of sustainability. And I've been watching lots of your live um, videos over the summer, which are inspirational. I love all your style and I love your cooking tips as well. So... Um, so that's you, Emma, and Lucy, she's rushed up you. from Cornwall and is in, is it Wiltshire tonight? Yes, I'm back home now to work. I, I've got, got myself ready for next week, and, um, well, it's, you know, yeah, we're... we're Did you have some time off, or was it working down there? A um, bit of everything. I'm always working. I'm probably like you, Lucy. I can't ever not work. I'm a bit of a workaholic. <laughs> it's so difficult, isn't it? And did you manage to get in that sea or not? Was it too cold? No, for you? but there were people swimming. Definitely, it's become it's a real. It's become a real sort of in fashion thing for sort of. Yeah. I don't know if it's middle aged menopausal women or who it is, but lots of people are sort of talking about the benefits of getting in cold water, aren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. No, it's yeah. You have to be brave. You do life. have to be brave. I, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not up there yet. But um. But thank you for sparing the time on a on a chilly Friday night. Um, thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Good. And and we've um, got I'm very happy I discovered your brand. I, I you know, I, it was my birthday and um, John, oh. took me, John took me for a little uh, visit to Ondo where we saw your lovely um, products and this jersey particularly. And um, so then I was introduced to all your other gorgeous things as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that we we have now met and linked Yes, up. well, I'm, I'm delighted you found us. My lovely Sarah, who runs the shop in Cornwall, um, yeah. managed to have a long and lovely chat with you. She was very excited. She is amazing. Anyone who's down in Cornwall must go and visit our <laughs> shop because Sarah, um, it loves meeting all our customers and finds yeah. out all the ins and outs of them. So she sort of introduced us, didn't she, in, in one way. But um, I just thought it'd be really interesting because I've been doing these chats sort of one a day uh, mm. for the last few days and then a few more next week with um, primarily people who are sort of a speak customers who we, we um, love what they do, similar sort of brands and um, different yeah. industries. So we've had the beauty industry, we had a sustainable blogger yesterday and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about sustainability and I appreciate that y you're no, um, mm -hmm. like me, you're, you're not, it's not your specialist area and you don't know everything, <laughs> but just the little bit that, that you have been thinking of and how the industry is changing. I thought it'd be really interesting to see um, how you've seen changes and what you and your team are, um, are doing on, along this sort of agenda. That's a that's very, very nice subject to talk about. And um, I think, you know, the first thing to say is that um, I've had an interior design practice for 25 years now. And um, it's been a really interesting sort of journey for us in terms of, um, you know, the type of products that we've specified along the way, the type of companies we've worked with. And um, what I've discovered is it, it always boils back down to, for me, 
is that I think the great thing that um, we can do uh, to sort of put our, you know, sustainability out there is actually to specify uh, products that are really well made and that, that are going to last a long time. Mm. Um, we were chatting earlier about this subject when I, um, when we spoke, and I think, um, you know, it's so easy to get almost, um, you know, fooled or sidetracked into thinking about, oh gosh, you know, I must buy my rugs with, you know, uh, using recycled bottles, or I must do uh, this, that and the other with all these sort of newfangled ways of, of making things, and they're all great. But actually, uh, one of the best ways that I believe that we can really help the environment is to actually do um, four things, I suppose, reduce First of all, what we buy. <laughs> Absolutely. Ultimately, um, consumerism is the worst form of, um, you know, damage to our environment. Um, and by reducing um, the amount of things that we buy, so rather than buying, um, you know, I don't know, um, ten or twenty things every year or two, maybe buy five, and um, the ones that you do buy, um, buy better quality and buy things that you you really love. Because by reducing um, what you buy, you're also reducing the packaging and the waste that goes with that, with everything that you've purchased along the way. Exactly, the carbon footprint. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've always had the kind of mantra, you know, buy once and buy well. Yeah. And we've been married for 30 years. And um, I have to say, you know, my kitchen table here is 35 years old. It's a pine, mm -hmm. it's an old pine table. Um, I've got lots of things dotted around the house that we bought when we were first married. And, you know, that's incredible to think that um, we've only ever had one kitchen table, for example. Yes. You know, and, and if you can do that, if you can try and find things along the way that you um, love and you think have got longevity, then that's the best form of um, being sustainable, I believe. It um, so is. I couldn't agree more. And, and not be caught up with trends, you know, trends in fashion, trends in design. I'm sure you'll agree with that. I mean, the jerseys we're wearing are a perfect example of that. You know, yeah. um, I think I had a fair old jersey like this when I was about 20 years old. <laughs> and, yeah. um, I just I just love it. I love it. It's very timeless. It's very classic. And I think that and is well made, beautiful. Wood. But you're still we were saying we'll still have this when we're 80 because I can't imagine unless the moths get to it, that it's, go it's going to fall apart or anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that whole thing about reducing what you buy, I think that's, that would be the first yes. thing I would try and um, help, help my clients with. And, and then, you know, when they come to, if a client comes to us and we're doing a, a project with them, you know, the first thing pretty much I'll ask is, what have you got existing? What furniture have you got that we can um, use and recover and maybe repaint or, or do things with that's, you know, actually not a wholesale change, not kind of starting from scratch but actually saying you know I've got this beautiful old armoire or a chest of drawers from my granny um what's wrong with brown furniture you know brown furniture is is beautiful furniture it's made to last it might be two or three hundred years old and I think one of the things that we or certainly I in, in our business try and instill with my design team is that I think the best homes that we can create are the ones where we are bringing in some history from the family, some pieces that um, give the house authenticity. And what's so lovely about that is it's a naturally sustainable process. So um, yeah, so reusing is great. Um, then the recycling, you know, that's a lovely thought that, okay, if someone comes to us and they have a house and they don't want the furniture still, then what do they do with it? You know, yeah. um, there's, there's obviously pieces that they won't want to keep. So recycling is the next big thing and i think um recycling um is hard it's really, it's really hard. hard especially Honestly, now you know it's it's, it's of a nightmare um, yeah but my my daughter's friend um he has started a business called partage i will give yeah. him a little push yeah no you um, must let me write that down partage partage yeah. p-a-r-t-a-g-e he's from um he's french cameroon and so half of the website is in french oh. <laughs> but um boris he's a fabulous guy and um, boris started this during lockdown this business and he's built his whole website now and um yeah it's absolutely brilliant it, if you go online onto partage you'll see exactly what happens but say I have, um, I don't know, a coffee machine over there, which I don't want anymore. Yeah. I sort of advertise my coffee machine and someone else um, wants that coffee machine, then you do that swap. And then you basically get points. 
and um, those points can be used. So there's no money exchange. It's basically yeah. just a point system and that those points that you gain can then be used to towards a purchase of an environmental company, which is a partner of Partage. So on the website, it explains it much better than I have. Gosh, but that's fantastic. And it's so true. Cause you know, let's say you are getting rid of the coffee machine. What yeah. do you do with it normally? It's so it's brilliant. It's like the lady yesterday who was talking about the food waste. There's a, there's a thing called um, Olio, I think, where you, yeah. you know, you've got, you go, most probably works a bit more in London, but that's just fantastic. We need to all know about those things. So we'll look them up and we'll- Yeah, we'll look up Partage. He's, he's, doing, he's doing brilliantly. Um, and then the other, the other, the last one of those sort of mantra of reduce, reuse, recycle, and yeah. the last one is return. And um, I think, you know, <laughs> this is something that, it, I'm sure it drives everybody mad who's listening to this um, tonight. But when you get a package through the door, you've ordered something on Amazon or on a, I don't know, an online company and you open up the packaging and it's filled with horrible plastic mm. bubble wrap or whatever it is, um, you know, those nasty tubes of um, sort of um, that spongy stuff, plastic stuff, all yeah. of that. Um, you know, I would really encourage them to wrap that wrapping back up with a letter to the managing director of the company to say sort your pla sort your packaging out um mate <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> and, or, and or, put it, or, put it, or put it on social media you know yeah. it, or go you know i'm often going into waitress to the customer service and saying you know you're telling everyone what you're doing in oxford with a plastic free aisle and yet all your hair ties are coming in teeny little yeah. plastic things that they never used to so it is I, I was on a, I was on an unnamed airline I won't mention which one but a very well-known airline um traveling a few months ago and during the coronavirus and I was absolutely horrified I didn't post it on um the web because I I just sort of felt I don't want to kind of name and shame but it really was awful and I was given by the air steward um a big plastic bag this was the food because they couldn't serve your own food a big plastic carrier bag Inside that was another plastic bag. Inside that was another one with your cutlery in. Inside that was a plastic bottle. It was a literally an environmental horror. And but I, I think I think you should name and shame Emma because because <laughs> I I do because I haven't flown all year apart from January. But you know even last year like you know Virgin they were wrapping their blanket around with a piece of you yeah. know paper British yeah. Airways are still doing them in plastic bags they are putting their cut away even Air well, India that you've mentioned the, you've mentioned the company I'm not going to mention so there well, you go I, I just I feel strongly so I did get I go up to the air hostess and they say oh no one listens to us and I said well can you just log the complaint but um but yes I mean maybe in these times they're going through a tough time so maybe we can possibly let them off but yes exactly it's I unnecessary to share this with you as well i don't know if you can see this book here because this is a lovely book i'm reading is it does it come out back to front when yes it does uh, okay so it's huga yeah um huga um discovering the danish art of happiness and it's spelled yes. h-y-g-g-e and yes. it's by olivia olivia telford and i'd okay. really recommend people read it it's um the danish word huga refers to a way of living um that naturally focuses on um, the fight against consumerism. I mean, it's much broader than that. But who, but when you meet Danish people, um, apparently they're the happiest. Yes. Uh, top three countries in the world. Yes. And it's not due to the fact that they have the smartest cars, the best this, the fastest that. They're very much focused on the family. They're focused on relationships. They're focused on the home being a sanctuary for them and well-being, things like yoga and meditation. And, and that whole hygge, is about is like cozy living really um and i just think you know if you can get into that mindset slightly and not feel like you've got to have the the best of everything you haven't got to have the brand new iphone or the smartest car or the yes. this or that you actually reduce your stress levels so much when you you know actually can relax and feel i don't need that and i'll use my iphone until it breaks or i'll use my car until i run it into the ground rather than going and buying a brand new electric car and we talking up and, well. i know and keeping up with everyone else but i think you're right and don't you think that that's what's sort of been quite good about this year if we can say it's mm. the word good is the wrong word but out of all the horribleness i think some yeah. of the things the positives are that we have realized you know i i've been i'm always on a crazy you know too fast pace because you know, small business and going to see suppliers and jumping on planes and jumping off them. And this year, just slowing down and appreciating just little, I've so much, I mean, I've always been a nature lover and being outside, but just you appreciate little things 
Yeah. It's the little things that are that we have. I think we'd forgotten about because we were so busy, you know, with the big wide world, like you said, communism, consumerism. Yeah. Whereas I think one of the things we've been locked down is we 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 have to go back to nature a bit, don't we? And and not not be running around and enjoy the moment more of simple we do. things. Yeah, we really do. I mean, I think, you know, this book is full of great things. Um, I just highlighted one which, um, which says um, another way in which Hugo positively impacts society as a whole is that by eliminating hyper consumerism, it significantly reduces the waste we create. Um, while consumerist societies can boast of strong um, production numbers and sales figures, they have to also admit to overwhelming amounts of waste. Um, some of this waste is the result of more items being produced um, than are even purchased. So, you know, there's just waste, waste, waste everywhere, I suppose. So it just goes back to this thing of, again, you know, buying once and buying well and buying using authentic materials, you know, like timber. You know, timber is a great, great material to buy because, um, as we said earlier, you know, that chest of drawers, granny's chest of drawers is two, could be 200 years old. Whereas if you buy an MDF piece of furniture or a chipboard piece of furniture, that's not going to last. And it's also going to be packed full of chemicals that are not going to be good when they do finally, you know, degrade after 500 years. No, so, exactly. And so, Emma, is this the time? Because I know that... Um... You, you're married yeah, John to John, is, who's, John is, yeah. <laughs> is he on standby? Because um, it's so exciting because he's uh, the co-founder of the wonderful Neptune, who I'm in awe of how well they've done, quite rightly so, but they've done so brilliantly. And uh, every every uh, time I look at your website, your oh, Instagram. You're very sweet. <laughs> I'm impressed hi, John. With what, uh, hi, John. I'm impressed with what you and Giles and Emma and your whole team have achieved. Oh. And um, having a quick chat with you today, it's great that you're on the same page as, uh, as us in this growing agenda, helped by the lovely, wonderful uh, David Ashenborough, who's, you know, I I I'm passionate about and making sure we all, we all take, make big steps. So tell us uh, a little bit about what you're doing um, with Neptune. And what I, my chat I just had with you earlier this afternoon, very quick in a crackled car journey for both of us, was just about, yeah, how well made your kitchens are in the same thing that Emma was saying, investing for life. They're, you know, good quality going back to keeping things for longer. I'll pass over to you now because you, you're much better at talking about it than me. Yeah, I mean, Emma sort of touched on um, how do you approach sustainability? And I think, you know, the, if, you, if you can, doing nothing is the best thing, but that's not very, very practical in many people's lives. So, companies like Neptune and the Spiga and Sintel should exist to try and help people do what they want to do but in as environmentally um, friendly way as possible and so we think you know we think very hard about sustainability and there's a there's a few we've got sort of four core, core approaches to our strategy the first one is to um, measure our um, performance levels so understand what our carbon footprint is look like looks like and what we can mm -hmm. And then to work across the entire business to reduce that. Yeah. So that's one and two. Um, the third one is, uh, which is what you were touching on, is is upon um, uh, the product life cycle. And we've always actually had a core interest in trying to make durable products. I'm just not a throwaway person. I never have been um, mm. brought up like that, and so. It's culturally the way that we've always thought about Neptune, trying to create products that will last a lifetime. We've always said that phrase. And today we talk about being a hundred year old company. And I genuinely believe that our piece of furniture are designed to last that period of time or longer. And so mm. we're, we're, the third thing is looking at uh, our life cycle and how can we create furniture that lasts a lifetime. One of the things we we do is we only use um, solid timber. And I was talking to you about one of the surprising benefits of solid timber that may that people may not um, quite realize, which is that, yeah, it's it, fascinating. that, that it is a, um, a, it's a carbon sink. So you actually are locking away carbon when you make furniture from solid timber, because a tree as it grows is absorbing carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and using carbon to build itself. Um, if it is burnt or if it falls in and decays, then it re-releases that 
carbon back into the atmosphere if it is um, harvested and of course what you need to do and we do is you need to be replanting behind taking trees um, mm. that are um, suitable for furniture making um, once you've then um, made that into furniture you've actually sequestered carbon that piece of furniture that's sitting in your home is a is a locked up piece of carbon effectively and therefore if you then look at your product life cycle and say well how do we make if that piece of furniture doesn't last long and you then say well we'll stick it in landfill or we'll burn it or whatever we do to to get rid of it you're re-releasing the carbon back into the atmosphere again but if it doesn't if it can stay in use and that's our key objective if it can stay in use then then it's permanently locked up so it's i it's never knew that that's, that is really fascinating, fascinating. I never knew, yeah i just never knew that that was the case so that's a great mm. thing to mm. know but, but I, I agree that like your kitchens could easily last two generations, you know, and, and if someone wanted was bored of them, they could just change, paint them, couldn't they? Or something? This one, I'll just tell you about this one behind us. So that white, you can see those white cupboards there. Yeah. Those cupboards are 30, oh no, 20. No, they're 2005. 2005 and we moved them from the old part of the house to this part of the house. And um, this kitchen, I think we've painted probably about eight times. <laughs> Yeah, so you get a new look, but by you don't, but you're not building a new room. Or... You're not building, and and that's what I always recommend to to my customers, yeah. my clients, when we're doing a, a house, um, a project that, um, you know, if you do get a spray lacquered kitchen, um, you're definitely going to limit the amount of time that that spray lacquered kitchen is going to last. It can get damaged, and then you can't you can't um, mend spray lacquer in the way that you can just hand paint with a nice water based paint a kitchen again. So be careful about doing, um, you know, a, a spray lacquer on a kitchen work surface because it's not really very sustainable, I guess, is my thought. Oh, well, that's good to know as well. When we started making upholstery, which was probably, I don't know, seven or eight years ago now, one of my key objectives was to work out how to make that in a way that had durability as well. And we, we were very kindly given by Emma's parents, uh, George Smith Sofa, which I've always admired. Mm. And the key thing about a good George Smith sofa is the frame. And of course, as furniture makers, we thought, well, why can't we? We can certainly make a decent frame. So right at the centre of our upholstery is making good frames, because what will happen with upholstery over time is that the fillings do start to deteriorate. Yes. No matter how hard you try to, and the yes. fabrics kind of um, slowly deteriorate. So unfortunately, we can't say the original sofa will last 100 years because it's mm. incredibly unlikely that that will happen unless you keep the curtains closed and make sure you are very, very <laughs> Never comfortable sit on it. safer all the time, <laughs> which is possible, but not necessarily very practical for mm. most people. Um, but we, what we do know is that you can take one of our um, pieces of upholstery and you can then re-upholster it. Uh, and, it and, and the upholster will not laugh at you and say, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> they can't re-upholster this. And, that, and I, I did quite a bit of research looking at how upholstery is made. In fact, I did an upholstery course, so uh, I was oh, well done. To how to how to do it well. Um, and but it, it's really true because I just went round to a friend who's done an upholstery course, and she was upholstering a chair, and she showed me the difference, like you mm. said, of a chair that that was not particularly good quality, and she said it's almost impossible to upholster because everything has gone. The springs, have gone. and by the time you mm. brought all of that, and actually the legs weren't that good, and you know, so you need mm. you need that well-made piece of mm, you need the frame to be frame yeah exactly. to, to, uh... you'll, be, you'll be horrified to see how most furniture frames are made <laughs> they are you know it's, they're made out of the cheapest bits of material and sort of masses of staple staples thrown into it because it's all covered you don't see it mm, yeah. um, there's cardboard in there there's kind of you know it's they are they are pretty <laughs> hideous um, and they're certainly not um, able to be recovered and no chance no well okay well that's a good one so you're so all the the new um uh what oh, you, right. furniture um, and well, what was yeah. your other point so you've got that in terms of your four key sustainable so the, the, la the yeah. last part of our sustainability um, strategy is ecological so just looking at what we can do to um, improve biodiversity um, and so we look at on our store sites and and we look at how we can improve uh, biodiversity there we're in the process of trying to Although we ensure all our timber comes from third party um, growers. So we ensure currently all our timber is replanted and it is replanted at a rate that is higher than we use. We're about to buy a decent tract of land and start planting trees. 
So these are kind of positive actions that you yes. can, um, outside of outside of trying to stop causing harm. You could, then there's opportunity to go and step out and do some, mm -hmm. you know, pro, um, positive things, Pro proactive things. Yes, yes, exactly. I think that's it. You need to look. I think it's like looking at the whole circle, isn't it? Of yeah. the beginning to the end to what you can do to improve um, yeah. and change. So exactly with us, it's the garment, but then it's I also the teaching. Just put a, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to put a really good word in there for all the antiques um, dealers in the country. Yes. We're incredibly lucky to live in a country where we have literally probably the finest antiques in the world and they are not expensive now. And, you know, you don't have to actually get, even get in a car to go and find antiques anymore. You can go on these amazing websites. There are lots of them. Yes, will you uh, tell us a couple of the names, Emma? Yeah, um, yeah. there's one called uh, Vinteria, V-I-N-T-E-R-I-A, Vin, yeah. which is really clever. Um, it's basically a whole database of antique dealers who come together under this one umbrella of this lady who set up her company a few years ago, and she's doing absolutely brilliantly. And, you know, if you want a mid-century lamp, then you can just Google mid-century lamp and up come all these lovely lamps that you can get. And it's just fantastic. Um, then there's also, um, I love Lawford's near Tetbury. So um, Toby yeah. Lawford is a good friend of mine, and he um, set up, you know, a small antique shop in Tetbury maybe 30 years ago now. And now he has one of the largest hangers um, in the country, I think, of this vast emporium of all these dealers who are under one roof in a, in a basically an aeroplane hangar. Um, and it is just an Aladdin's cave. So if you want a really great day out um, and you're not too far away, um, come, come there, come to there. Someone well, I think that's so, um, so good to know, but also, you know the tips, which are now virtually impossible to get to. I don't know if, you, you know, because everyone in lockdown has been sorting their houses out. And you, yeah. but, but my friend, she's an artist and she lives in Wales and she's got great style and taste. And her whole house, but limited budget, her whole house was decorated by things they found at the tip that people were throwing out. And they just found that's wonderful brilliant. sort of art deco lamps and things from the 70s and beautiful bits of material. And, you know, and she, she sewed them differently or, you know, made into a window seat or... And, and because someone's just posted here and we can't all afford expensive bits of furniture. But I think that you can, it's about being clever, isn't and it? Then go, let me tell you another best kept secret. Go yeah. to Kempton, go to Kempton, Kempton Racecourse. Yes. Um, and Arding Light. They both go, I think they're every month or every two Bassi months. Antiques There's Bass, Bass the Antiques Fair as well. But, yes. but Kempton is, is even more kind of grassroots it's literally on the on the race course and it i think it's every month and um our daughter betty goes there she's a set decorator for film and um she goes there to find all sorts of wonderful things for period dramas that she's working on um you you know you might find a beautiful silver tankard or you might find a, a whole basket full of old walking sticks or um books, and the same books, as car boot sales books. isn't it it's the same it's as car boot sales of. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. And, and then there's one at Arding Light. They go all over the country. So it's worth looking up the, uh, those, those um, antiques fairs. Um, and then, you know, it's even, it's like a pleasure. It gives you so much yes. happiness as well. Um, even if you don't buy anything, I'm always dragging you around places, aren't I? There's David Lay but one. It's so good. I, I, David Lay. David Lay. Please mention David Lay. I, I don't know David Lay, but I'm, I need to look David Lay up. That's a brilliant suggestion. Thank you. Um, but it, it, ever... it, gives you, it gives you a warm sort of satisfaction if, if something is going to have a second life. Like, you know, I've just done my kitchen up and I put some things on our village Facebook and people came out and collected them and then some doors from the cottage on the outside and someone took yeah. them. And, you know, you just want everything to carry on. You don't want it to end yeah. up in, in landfill. It's, so it's, it's, so, nice. it's so nice. Our first, um, our first garden table when we were just starting Neptune and um, our first ever product at Neptune was a garden hammock. And um, we um, desperately needed, we couldn't afford um, to buy garden furniture. So um, I said to John, I really need a garden table. How can you make us a garden table? And um, at the time, I think we had an old door in the shed that we'd taken off when we were doing our building work. So you cobbled together a, a table out of a fantastic old piece of pine from a door. And it served as a garden table for about four years, didn't it? Served a little while. I think you weren't that impressed by that joinery. <laughs> 
Well, well done for trying. I've got a picnic table. You know, it did, work. Um, it did last. It was very nice for us. It lasted. Then, well, uh, well done. Well done for trying. I have to say. I know like... exactly. He gave it a go. He's a very good handyman, actually. I must say, if I ever, uh, if all else fails, he'll build a baker's furniture anyway. I know that much. <laughs> well, well, good because I, I need one of those. But we, my parents, um, had a, you know, like a pub garden bench where you sit on both sides, um, and they they had one of those made when we were little, and. Um, so we lived in the house for 50 years and then when they moved out which is just a year ago i've now got it in my garden people the guys who first built it have now nailed it up and i've painted it and it's still still there and it's been out it's been it's out in the rain and wind and it's, it's still i can still sit on it i just i'm so used to throwing things away but i don't need to because it's still fine so <laughs> um so anything else so that's all really good any other I, tips Do, i just saw think... somebody saying something about anything with provenances you know, is wonderful. And I, I would agree with mm. that. But I, I think there's another tip I would say, something that um, actually our IT director's wife was look, re, doing some research on in architecture. And she came up, I, 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 I swept up this phrase with glee, because I think it's a really interesting one, which is yeah. this concept that you, you achieve sustainability through beauty. And it's a very interesting um, idea that beautiful things are naturally sustainable. And that's because as humans, we we love beautiful things. You know, we're attracted yeah. to them and we will look yeah. after them and we will keep them going. So when you look at architecture as an example, what are all the buildings that remain standing? They're all the ones that had have incredible beauty. And so people will go back and look after them and repair them. And the same is true in any, in any field. So, it, you know, a, one nice piece of furniture that has this provenance that somebody mentioned and has beauty it's going to get looked after. It's just going to go on and on and on. So mm -hmm. for me, that's where to turn. Not, and this is this is how we turn away from rampant consumerism. Is to just uh, spend a little bit more time thinking about what would mean something to us. I love it when I get letters from customers who are appreciating something they bought years ago that they have of ours. It makes a huge difference. Yes, I totally agree, and I think you're right. It goes back to that considered purchase that. Um, I've got, it was going to be in my background. I don't know if you can see, can you see that sort of bird thing? Oh, yeah. yes. So it's these, we have Canadian geese flying over here the whole time in their, in their you know, um, flock. Yeah. And when my father died a couple of years ago, I, 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 my office is in Batty, I kept walking past and seeing this in, the, in this wholesaler's window. And it was quite expensive. And I kept thinking, no, I can't. I kept thinking, no. And then I, and then I thought, but as a memory of my father, I'm going to buy it and, you know, and, and it meant a lot, but I had to think about it over a period of six months when I eventually decided it sold out, but you did get another one in. But, but um, you know, that's not going anywhere for a very long time because it was a really big thing and, um, and I love it. So I think, it, I think it's almost like think once, think twice. It's a bit like your children, I'm sure, you know, kids want something and if they, you know, after a while they might forget about it. It's like if you really wake mm -hmm. up the next morning or the next week or the next month, you still want it, um, then it's a different... No, I know um, our other daughter Daisy, who's who's the fine artist and who's busy with her landscapes and portraits. But I know, you know, she's she's got this wonderful fan base now of lovely people who just really, you know, are saving up to buy one of her paintings because they believe that this is something that they want to have in their family um, and those kind of things. You know, when we're talking about decoration and that, meaningful, aren't they? that next layer of decoration. Um, you know, to have in your home, buy things that mean something to you, exactly, and that you've really, you know, they've really attracted you, because that will never go away, that attraction, that love that you've talked about. The thing I know, and actually, John, talking about beautiful things, I've got some pine cones that I took up to London for some Instagram thing, and I, I collected them all at the beginning of the lockdown, you know, in March, for the fire. But they're so beautiful, yeah. I can't actually put yeah. them on the fire because they're really big, beautiful. So That's the Fibonacci them. sequence, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they're, in my, they're in my fruit bowl at the moment. But um, So anything else, guys, just before you go, um, LED lighting you were going to mention because we, that's quite a big food? one. What about food and recipes? Did you want to talk oh, about yes. that? Yes. Are you, really you guys, are you guys going vegan? Yeah, we've gone vegan. So uh -huh. we're plant-based. A while ago. Uh, is that for good? It's Is amazing. That... We feel so healthy on it. And um, that's the biggest way to save the planet, so obviously. what's Christmas? What's... Yes, exactly. Like Amal said, it's so much cheaper as well. What is Christmas yeah. 
what's Christmas um, dinner going to be then? Lunch going to be um, all time? Well, I've made, last year I did like, a, I know it sounds pretty sort of hippie, but I made a nut, a nut roast, but it was absolutely delicious. And it's basically a stuffing with loads of um, dried fruits and walnuts. And um, you use a bit of rye bread and um, onions, garlic, herbs. Um, and yeah, so there's a, there's a, that's a, what, that's a wonderful thing. A nut, a nut, nut roast. So um, really no vegan, no, no butter, nothing. No. no butter at all, no. Gosh, I mean, you can use plant-based butter. There's so many amazing ingredients. So it's, it's a complete, I mean, it's really been an interesting journey for the last year, year and a bit with Emma because you know, Emma is a naturally uh, wonderful host and cook but had never understood anything about plant-based. I remember when we got um, some... Um, tofu. Tofu, and it sat in the fridge for about six months. Yes! We had no idea what to do with it. But it, it, we watched this um, thing called Game Changers on Netflix, which I would thoroughly recommend to anybody about uh, to, to, to have a look at. Oh, yes, really, Game Change, yes. Yeah, it's really a great a way to think about um, why you might consider going plant-based. Because what I liked about it, because there's lots of negative things about, you know, you shouldn't eat animals, which I actually do agree with. You shouldn't, and, and you, but you're not going to face that fact. And I totally understand why you wouldn't face that fact when that's what you do. But um, when you watch the game changes, this gives you really positive reasons why you might give it a shot. Yeah, it's um, and that's what happened to us. I was vegetarian for a while, and so we gave it, you know, gave it a shot, and it was. Um, I will put my nut. I will definitely do a nut roast recipe. I'm I think doing it as a family is really good because you know, I suppose as a single person, I eat out a lot at friends' house and stuff. I mean, obviously, a bit, bit, bit more difficult this year, but, um, but. You know, I sort of go, I go to places thinking I'm not going to eat and, and I don't eat much myself, but then mm. I'm, I find it difficult to turn down, you know, I'm not strict enough. Um, mm. So I think doing it all together and embedding it in your culture, because once, as we all know, change, once you've got through the first 20 days or whatever they say it is, you know, yeah. 28 days, it, like, it becomes much easier, doesn't it? Like I've just given yeah. up. Cuff, cough, and you don't and have to, I always say, don't, don't, I always say to people, don't, um, think of yourself as going vegan straight away just no. do it gradually yes you know, just 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 start to cut down gradually and it will happen naturally it will happen because actually i don't ever think about meat anymore or fish um and it doesn't it doesn't bother either of us anymore at all um it's actually really lovely it's a really exciting new kind of world out there of and a health a very healthy world very healthy. Well, you do naturally say, lose a, a bit of weight as well a few people have asked you to share your Christmas recipe, so it would be great at some stage if you do that. Um, but tell us, um, Emma, about yeah, sure. your um, what you what we could cook for a nice, healthy, warming vegan meal this weekend. Then, and just a quick, you know. Well, the one um, Billy and I did, um, which is on my Instagram, I think. Um, my son Billy helped me because he he grew up. He grew up. He has spent some time in Italy um, the last couple of years, and he did Italian at university. So he, I was very fortunate to have him in my kitchen, and um, he Gosh, shared yeah. his recipe with us. Yeah, so the one that I think people might like, and it's not too hardcore vegan actually, because it's just delicious. It doesn't have any tofu in it. <laughs> yes, um, is a pasta, a lovely pasta. Billy, what was it? The rigatoni. Rigatoni. Yeah. Rigatoni. Tortellini. Tortelloni, something like that. The long ones, the tubers. Yes. Ones. You can use any kind you want. Uh, but we basically um, baked a pumpkin. So we chopped up the pumpkin. I didn't bother taking the, um, uh, the, the, the skin off. I just cut it into chunks, took the seeds out and baked it for about half an hour. Yeah. And then um, you scoop that out. I've got the recipe. It's on, it's on my Instagram. So you'll be able to find it on the IGTV. Um, and so what's it called then? Um, it's the pumpkin pasta. Oh, the pump! Oh, and, and someone just said the par parsnip and pear soup was amazing. Oh, as well. yeah, no, that was a great one. I was going to recommend the um, uh, <sighs> the tofu. The, the, yeah, the tofu toscano. Uh, tofu toscano, yes, tofu that's toscano, amazing. Which is, I, I I actually cooked that the other day, and I'm not really much of a chef, if I'm honest, but I cooked it the other day, and um, Daisy, our eldest daughter, completely died and went to heaven. Yeah, she said, said that was the best thing she never had. I can because see it. I can see not, a cookbook coming. Unless you've already done one, guys, this, have you? It was using the um, Biona tofu. So Biona, it comes in a glass basically made jar. a cutlet out of it and uh, cooked it in an awful lot of olive oil and herbs yeah. and um, served it with some. Oh, it's beautiful! It has with some sesame seeds. So uh, oh no, I put a polenta. I put a polenta flour, flour coating on it. Mm. Um, oh, you so, see, that's I think clever because I find tofu 
I, I think that's nice. It gives it a crunchier thing, does it? Rather than just yeah. the, yeah. yes. And so is that so the best top as well? Oh, someone else is, oh, Daisy. Daisy said it was honestly incredible. Thank you, Daisy. Oh, you're, Daisy, how sweet. You're a good girl, Daisy. Daddy. And good what, you, daddy's what's girl. That, um, the glass jar, that is the, one of the best toffees that you like, yeah. is it? Because I, I always know. struggle. It's very firm, though. And the, can I just say one other amazing thing about buying this one is when you finish the tofu, you have this wonderful glass jam jar. Yes. And we, we use those in the fridge for all our leftovers. So. The labels fall off. You soak them in water for about yeah. four minutes. The water, yeah. the labels fall off and you have an amazing jar that you can put all your stuff Yes, in. well, I, I think I get the coconut oil as well. And it's the same thing. It's in a glass. I love this the... company. They are absolutely an amazing company. I should have a TV program, darling. Yeah, I know you should. Yeah, Thanks you should. You, you'd have to fit that into your schedule. You're doing, like, <laughs> you're doing exactly. one at now, really. But yes, you're both brilliant. But um, we could chat all night and your poor son oh. probably wants his delicious meal that, um, well, yeah, actually, he sounds like he can again. cook it. Um, so oh, anything it's else? It's been so you... lovely, Lucy. I wanted to say how much I really um, love your brand as well. And actually, you know, it's, it's a really great... Oh, very nice. Well, this is beautiful, beautiful. but I think the whole, the whole behind you know, your whole sort of message and your philosophy is really wonderful and very refreshing. And well, that's really sweet of you. That's so sweet of you. And actually Sarah came up with a good idea because you know, we do these beach cleanups every month in um, Kenya because when I went out there once I was heartbroken to see yeah. how much plastic was on one particular beach where the you know, storm had been throwing it up. Um, and she said, well, what about doing a beach clean in Cornwall every month? So that might, might that's start a good idea. Stage and yeah. it's a, a beach clean, but it's, you know, sometimes Love, sometimes nicely you go to the beach and there isn't much plastic but sometimes and now with these face masks everywhere oh oh my again. goodness that's the that is the next catastrophe it's a, it is it's a, an environmental it's a absolute yeah. horror yeah yeah particularly it, it, with a recent research in denmark three thousand people used face masks and three thousand that didn't and there was no difference between in infection rates so oh mm. really oh, mm. it's just a shocker it's yeah. a shocker yeah. and also people you know the ppp equipment that Oh, you know, the, the amount of the, the poor nurses, you know, they have to change all this plastic every single time they go and see another patient. I mean, this whole, it has been, I suppose in one way, um, COVID has been good for the environment, but in the other way, it's been an absolute disaster. But, um, mm. but the great thing about this agenda is that we're all, so many people are really moving forward in big ways this year, particularly. And I it's agree. great to hear what the team's doing. Yeah, I think it's been an amazing year. And, you know, John and I, two years ago, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about sustainability because it wasn't at the forefront. You know, we were only just starting. And I, I, I would say to everybody listening, it's never too late. You know, I'm not ashamed of the fact that I've only really started to really sit up and listen and look and learn. In yeah, the last, we did do it, but we didn't. In the last few we years, we didn't make it as a, a, a the it, front of our agenda. No, it wasn't at the forefront. Yeah. So. No, we you like. Yeah, it but, sounds like you have been a bit like me, brought up in a family where nothing. You know, my mother used to wash up plastic bags and um store every jar jar and you know and eggshells were kept, were used for the slug bait yeah. and i was saying the other day, exactly, they, yeah. you know those black plastic things that films used to go in, in the old emma's mum spun the dog hair yeah. to make to make hats out of yeah we were very oh, really friendly as children that we is had the good life than... i lived the good life you yeah. really did that's one more than yeah. us but we we had mum used to mold all the soaps from different leftover soaps to make one soap so the little bits of soap didn't go to waste so really oh my god i know so it can go on but i think maybe that's why we're all on the same page we we don't yeah. like it ourselves so um well listen guys yeah, really good to you. one day hopefully yeah. i'll meet you in person um and, i hope um, so too thank you so much for for have a lovely rest of the weekend and thank you to everybody for watching as well it's yes any questions lovely comments. emma on any more of her recipes or anything else because a few people have said a few things i don't know if you can get the comments back but a lot of them complimenting uh, your roasted pumpkin seeds and walnuts yeah those are good yeah. <laughs> make your own washable them. masks yes we totally agree with that anything yeah. you can make yourself from leftover materials is always good yeah. uh definitely so, uh, all really good but oh, um lovely. thanks guys really no, good to see you, to you Lucy. thank Take you care. again everybody bye-bye yeah. now thanks yeah. bye bye, -bye.